before we begin i would like to underline the certain statements made on the conference call today may be forward looking in nature and a disclaimer to this effect has been included in the investor presentation shared with you earlier and also available on stock exchange website i would now like to request mr singhal to share his perspectives with you thank you and over to you sir yes yeah, so, so thank you mr uh, welcome everybody and thank you for the participation in the call today i wish you all a very happy 2022 i hope you have overcome challenges in the recession and I'm and we are grateful to our frontline workers for their efforts in this pandemic i'm also pleased to inform that we have achieved an all time high revenue in a bid down in this quarter with the revenue coming at 17% while it was going at 8% and back was the 14% this is thanking king in despite of a high base of last year that both the domestic and ex exports are rising trends of input cost the domestic group was by 8% while the exports were robust of 19% in the quarter under review we are stand in the front line when we are the leading edge technology is a complex chemistry our team are engaged in discovering better and more efficient pathways to commercial molecules for global arena innovators across the world acknowledge this and we have a number of inquiries from our existing and potential clients and partners and our rising market beat transaction in new inquiries has continued and significant number of inquiries are coming from non action space too and given the opportunity to build its next core competencies and as in that area we have acquired more than 8 customers new customers during the 9 months and there is a rich pipeline of more than 40 products which are at different stages being evaluated and more interestingly more than 20% of these are non action we are targeting to commercialize three new molecules in due course in addition to four molecules already commercialized by december a total of eight for the year we have commissioned new complex building block with a comp composition of flow and back process of monomethyl hydrogen and mh this is an extremely complex chemistry and challenging the technology transfers and capabilities and we are scaling up production and our team is is one of the few in the world who have been able to build this production capability and demonstrate commercial production another great achievement that we are proud of and the basic performance for the quarter was driven fairly by the agroclimatic ravi conditions supported by right price hikes affected by key products we undertook successful launches of one of our new insecticides for rice and two specialty fungicides focused on horticulture and rice we also successfully launched a number of new brands in the horticulture segment with the jivagro which continues to enjoy a strong saving which with our key product positioning well as category leaders moreover over the 15 to 8 18 products at different stages of development and are going to get into registration the idea is to further strengthen our market lines in the coming period and some of our nascent novel introduction country to perform ahead of our expectations let me take you a few of the examples in that i'm happy to report that of kira the new wheat herbicide continues to grow from strength to strength and the kita decrease is an increase of three folds in this year in fact with the kira we're changing the habits of the farmer again a strong concept selling bit being done for the first time ever in that segment as a pre emergent herbicide usage the other interesting is launch of pheromone based product PV not for the menace of the pest of ping pong worm is another sustainable solution, and we are working with public-private partnerships to answer the covering needs of this, and have been able to demonstrate this performance, which has given excellent results over five different states in the country. Once again, our foray into specialty biological product, first of its kind, which has now been launched in India on the grape segment, it has given a great in a wicked product to the market in the grape segment which is safe and not and prevent disease management for again one of the challenging pests which is the powdery mildew disease and enhances the quality also enhances the quality in the last and the shine of the product so another great three launches which pi has got some new innovative concepts into the ag market which we expect over time to further scale up and to demonstrate our capability as a differentiated player in the ag segment We continue to strengthen our marketing approach 
Supporting has already a strong pipeline of brands working close quarter with specially dedicated personnel in pharma to announce through better use of technology and modern best practices. Our business outlook remains robust and we are very confident of achieving the original growth guidance for the current financials. I would also highlight that we have refreshed the PI compass. We set ourselves a clear direction and a mission to further our growth. We set the purpose of reimagining a healthier planet and our vision to lead with science and technology and human ingenuity to address the latent nutrition and health needs of the planet. We are aligning the organization across various levels in order to achieve and drive the PI compass. A diversification into adjacencies to inorganic roots, a top agenda apart from technologies. Scale-ups, we are evaluating various M&A opportunities, both India and globally, to zero down on a few which meet the objective of creating a sustainable difference in value proposition in line to our purpose, vision, and the value by which you want to run the organization. We have elevated our homegrown talent and leadership in alignment to meet the delivery and development agenda aligned in terms of our purpose and vision, both in the CS and the domestic business. This rewards long-term business contribution and also helps drive the culture of medicality in across all levels. Last but not the least, we are proud of our industry and customer colonies. As announced earlier, PI emerged in the top quartile company in the very first S&P Global Sustainability Assessment with an 82 percentile industry ranking. This ranking with a gold star rating with the 96 percentile rating of EcoVirus, a high score under the Independent Together for Sustainability, the TFS assessment for global customer, clearly demonstrates and predicts our ESG focus. The budget speaks of our honorable minister, finance minister, on 1st of February, unleashed a series of programs for benefit of agriculture and chemical export sector. We believe these long-term policy initiatives by the government of India shall further boost opportunities in the Indian and agriculture. Agri input and pressure to chemical manufacturing in India will help companies like PR in the further growth. Momentum as we move. With that, let me first thank all our stakeholders for the contributions of this quarter and wish you good health and stay safe. I, with this, would like to now hand over to our CFO, Mani Kankan, to share his highlights of our financial performance. And once again, thank you all for coming to participate on this call. Thank you, Mr. Fingal. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for joining us on the call today. I'll be summarizing the financial highlights of the company for the third quarter ended 31st December 2021. Please note that all comparisons are on a year-on-year -year basis and refer to consolidated performance. During Q3 FI 22, we reported all-time revenues of 1356 crores, a growth of 17% over the same period last year. This was driven by solid growth in export revenues by 19% to rupees 1076 crores and 8% gain in domestic revenues to rupees 280 crores. I would like to highlight here that we have grown on a high base of last year where domestic revenues grew by 26% and export revenues increased by 40% in Q3 FI21 over the previous period year on year. The trend of elevated inputs cost continued during the quarter. Although they have affected partial pass through by increasing product prices, both in exports as well as in domestic markets. Full impact of price hikes will be reflected in the coming quarters. Our gross margin contracted by 49 basis points in Q3 FI22 to 46% due to lower export incentives and partial cost pass through, among others. This negated the impact of favorable product mix. EBITDA increased by 8% to record 297 crores. The margin moderation came in due to increased overhead by 24%, mainly attributed to sharp increase in fuel and, and other related utilities costs 
logistic costs and one-off expenses pertaining to strategic initiatives. These one-off expenses are non-recurring in nature and we expect our price hike to partially mitigate the cost increase in the coming quarters. Profit of the track improved by 14% to 223 crore in line with our planned effective tax rate. Our balance sheet further strengthened during the quarter. Net sales to fixed assets ratio improved to 2.07 from 1.89 in March 2021. While total capex for YTM FY22 periods to that rupees 228 crores. Inventory level was were maintained at the similar level of the last quarter to avoid supply chain disruption and meet customer supply schedules and continued operations. Company maintained its strong liquidity position with surplus cash and net of rupees 2078 crores, including gratuitous deposits. That concludes my opening remarks. I will now request the moderator to open the forum. Forum for Q and Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we would also request you to please limit your questions to two per participant. Time permitting, you may come back in the queue for a follow-up question. Anyone who has a question may enter star and one. We'll take a first question from the line of Ankur Perival from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, first question on the, the CSM side, uh, you know, decent growth uh, given the high base as well on a year on year basis. Uh, but uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, probably this will be the highest, uh, you know, new product launch uh, for us in this financial year. Uh, and, uh, you know, considering the new client ads, which you highlighted as well, uh, your thoughts on the incremental growth, maybe from a medium term perspective, uh, how should we look at uh, that number? Yeah, so thanks. Uh, I think when we start looking at the business, uh, since we're already in a high base, and looking at the growth, what is the good part is we've seen a lot of positivity coming in terms of uh, the demand cycle in this area. And as you can see, we've won this. In the coming year, very clearly, we will be further looking to enhance our capacities in terms of both bringing about a, by adding capacity in the existing facilities and also going ahead to probably start building the base for another MPP. We see a positive trajectory in terms of demand, both in terms of the existing business, in terms of new businesses which are coming. So PI's approach of always ahead, investing ahead of time is something that is probably going to drive uh, our investments going to the next year, which should be a, a good trajectory going into the future. I would appreciate that PI is always focused on new generation products, and we are seeing some of the new AIs getting concluded in the demand cycle in our commercialization initial phase, which obviously would ramp up with time to come. Sure. And, and just to follow up there, uh, these new product launches, uh, both for, let's say, you know, YTD FY22 as well as what we saw in FY21, uh, what should be the ideal time frame for them, for us to see a scale up there? As in, these will be contributing significantly to FY23 revenues or 24? Well, as you know, the new products will take usually three to five years before they touch maturity. And some of them are interesting. We also in the area of the electronic chemicals as we diversify our activities into different fine chemical areas. So the maturity of these would be probably longer than five years, but yes, you would see a good substantial volume in three to five years. Yeah. Sure. Yes. Uh, and sir, uh, yeah, uh, and a second question on the working capital side. Uh, you know, I take your point in terms of, uh, you know, higher working capital because of the inventory side. Uh, but even the receivables saw, you know, slight uptick there. Uh, should we read too much into it or, you know, because the receivables days have been steady at around 70 or days since last couple of quarters. Uh, right. What could be a new, you know, uh, a number there to watch out for? I think that's a pretty steady number to watch. But if I was to look at the area, it's an improvement over last year, as you would see. But obviously, inventory cycles are high, and you know that also goes to say, which creates a great our objective between customer satisfaction. We have been able to deliver more than 98 percent 
of our demands to our customers on time, even with the challenges of COVID over the last two years and with supply chain disruptions. So the inventory management optimization is done in a way to make sure that we can continue to smoothly supply product to our customer while augmenting our capacity. Yeah. And look at this challenge. It could last another year. This could be a challenging play. But internally, the company is also looking to say this is going to be a new normal, so how do we optimize here further? That's the approach the organization is taking. Sure. Uh, you know, my question was more specifically on, on the receivable side. You know, we were at around 80, 85 days earlier, and we have seen that number coming down to around 60 to 70. Uh, but in the nine months, we are going back to that, you know, 70 plus days on the receivable side. So uh, is that the new number, new normal that we should consider? Yeah, I just wanted to clarify. Last year, DSO was among 16 and odd days, and that was of December 20. Right now, we are in 71 days. Uh, this is where we are. Can say as explained, and going forward, obviously these things slightly fluctuate, but it will be in the same level of 69 to 70 days. It will be. Okay, fair enough. Uh, thank you, and all the best. Thank you. The other, the other factor there, uh, you know, if you are seeing this unfold on a blended basis, is the, you know, some change in the business composition. So, because the blended revenue is. Export and domestic, and as you know, that the receivable cycle in export is shorter than the domestic. Now, since the, the share of exports is more uh, in the current year vis a vis last year, you see this change. Sure, sure. M makes sense, Mr. Zemar. Yeah, thanks a lot for that. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take a next question from the line of Bhavesh Chen from Kotak Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you for giving this opportunity. Uh, so first question on this AgroChem CSM, how do we see the growth over medium to long term, considering few of our Q molecules are going off patent over the next two to three years? So, I mean, you know, obviously there has been a certain challenge to regulate the area for getting new registrations. As you would see, we will be launching four new products coming in the coming year. Are we talking about CSM? We're talking about AgChem, sorry, domestic. Uh, I think I'm talking about export CSM. Oh, okay. So, I mean, see, generic or no generic, as you see, the contract manufacturing business is always working on the area of our cost benefit at arbitrage. So there is no pressure on the manufacturing cost which could be driven from there. On the other hand, a genericization happened and you would have seen that for any molecule. The key molecule inventor continues to hold its premium market share and price and continue to grow the market share. So as you would see, we see this not as a pressure at least for the next three to four, five years because of these molecules because the genericization cycle in some of the geographies in time and some of the geographies which are coming also offer data protection, which further continues to do that. On the other hand, our own ability with experience in terms of cost efficiency and 10 15 years of these molecule experience in manufacturing, I'm pretty confident that we are the best cost structures in the world in some of these products as we continue to go ahead. Okay. Okay. And the second question on this pharma uh, CSM uh, piece post in are we actively looking for more opportunity? and whether we can build this business organically uh, and scale up much faster or inorganic will be an imperative to scale up this pharma CSM business much faster. So definitely we are looking. There is no questions on that. I think now the hunger is what even bigger because we need to catch up with time. So we will be looking at this place in both organic and inorganic. On the other hand, I must mention that while we will continue to invest to look at the areas for an organic opportunity, uh, we have got a team of in R&D with dedicated resources and I'm building other R&D capabilities further in terms of infrastructure, which will be worked by which on certain identified products, which are the non-GMP space. And on the other hand, we will should be also augmenting one of the existing assets to do with pharma intermediates in this coming year so that we continue to do organic. But as you would appreciate, we want to do something substantial and pretty quick. Uh, organic, the pace is the way it is, which is continuing. But the inorganic action is what we want to accelerate the process and more so get closer to the opportunity that we're trying to achieve, what we're trying to do earlier, but in a faster pace without losing the time dimension, which is been lost. But, so we're looking at opportunities in that line. 
Okay, sir. I have more questions. I will come back in queue. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Vishnu Kumar from Spark Capital. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir, and thanks for your time. Um, on the pharma inorganic acquisition, would there be an outer timeline by which we can expect you to close something, something like two quarters, three quarters? Is, is there something in outer timeline that at least you can give us? Vishnu, thank you for this question. I would like to do that as soon as possible. So we are on, we are, we are looking, but we got to make sure that we get the right bite, right? <laughs> Sorry, so obviously, like to let some action moving obviously within the year. In next week, what is this? I'm sorry, sir, I'm not able to hear you clearly. I said, you know, we would like to move this as soon as possible as of yesterday. So, obviously, we're looking on an aggressive pace and we would like to have something moving in the next week, what is for sure. Got it, sir. And uh, so, just wanted to get some uh, uh, thoughts on your. You mentioned MMH, and also you also mentioned about some non-agro uh, um, products that you're looking into. Uh, firstly, on MMH, wanted to understand uh, what is the opportunity, uh, uh, what is the growth potential. If you could give us some insights on it. And secondly, on the non-agro products, when we are scaling up, would it require additional capex, uh, or how should we look at the capex and growth trajectory on uh, on this side? So, you see, MMH in any case is a backward integration strategy, and we're also looking at certain core intermediate blocks, which is further giving us the cost arbitrage and a risk mitigation plan, back with the opportunity to have certain revenues and skill goods in certain intermediate blocks. Uh, but the interesting factor is unique of its kind in terms of the way the molecule, the process technology has been worked. It's a combination of pro and bad. So it gives us a new capability enhancement of dealing with hazardous products and science. Uh, in, in regards to the, obviously the CapEx, as you know, we have put some aggressive capital over the last two years. And as you've seen, that we've also looked at 15 to 20 percent capacity enhancement to an operation excellence and efficiency. The footprint of the MPP 10 is far bigger, is 30 percent bigger than any of the other MPPs. So this revenue growth plan is going to be driven by that. But looking at what we see coming in, we are looking at two prompt investments, which will be, which will probably come to you post next quarter, as our business budgets and all gets approved. That we are looking to further get into putting up another MPP, which and on the other hand, we are also looking to augment one of our assets and we upgrade it to the pharma intermediate space so that we have the organic play which we are planning to do into operation by the end of the year. Hmm? Understood. This pharma, uh, uh, organically, uh, what is it, the revenue potential that we could possibly reach by, uh, uh, by next year or maybe one or two years uh, that we are currently uh, working on? So that would be too early for me to comment. We are at different stages of evaluation, right? So we are maturing and working on this. Uh, we will come back with a better understanding in the next couple of quarters. Hmm? Got it, sir. Thank you. And one suggestion, uh, the voice is v uh, very, un it's not clear. Uh, maybe I think you're speaking in the speaker, if it possibly say it would be useful. Thank you. Is it better now? Um, somewhat, but better, uh, but it could be much better. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Rohit Nagraj from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so uh, we have mentioned that we have partially passed on the price increases. Now, uh, given the cost pressures that currently we are facing, we will be passing it on in Q4 as well. But in case of uh, retreating of the input uh, prices, what generally happens uh, because there is a lag in terms of passing on the price uh, input cost increases. But whenever the input cost again decrease, then how does it uh, work for us? Thank you. Well, it's, it's, the, it's the same cycle, no? It works one, one way or the other way. Mm -hmm. But typically, we have the inventories and time to which these orders are committed, so that's less of an impact than the input, so that kind of works up in the same right. way. Right. So generally, it is about three months in terms of uh, the lag effect that comes into play on either side. It takes a quarter, depends on the product and offers, yes, quarter or so, it depends and also depends on the inventory levels, yes. Typically, that's the average time you can look at, yeah. All right, sir. thanks. 
Now, so the second question is uh, on the balance sheet. So we have uh, borrowings of close to about 300 crores and uh, we have a cash surplus of about 2300 crores. So any specific reason to uh, keep those borrowings on the books? Money? Yeah, thank you. It's on the ECB, which we have uh, taken up uh, a couple of years back. That is uh, an, with an average maturity of five years. It's continuing in the books. It's uh, beneficial comparing the rate which we have taken at that time. So we also evaluated the same thing and uh, find that it is still worth to keep the ECB on our books. Right, sir. Got it. Uh, thanks a lot, investor, sir. Thank you. We'll take a next question from the line of Madana Gopal Ramu from Sundaram Alternates Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir, and congratulations for a very good show on the CSM business. Um, sir, you mentioned on the uh, MMH capability coming in. If I understand, it is it is going to help us to become more cost competitive for scaling up the existing products, or is it uh, improving our capability to uh, say synthesize more new molecules? It does both, to be honest. Okay. So uh, benefits of this are likely to come uh, in, the sh in, the, in the medium term or, uh, 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 or do we have to wait uh, really three, five years? This is not going to give us revenue of MMH. We are looking to get revenue for the products that we have in the pipe. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. So it's in the, the, the molecules already commercialized will see the benefits of this coming through. Some of them and some to be. Okay. Okay. And apart from you also mentioned about yeah. Apart from cost, this also uh, deals the availability of material, you know, on time because so far this was being imported uh, mainly from China, okay, and as you know, given the current scenario, it is, uh, you know, a strategic move to deal it from, from that, uh, you know, source. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, and the um, second question I had was, uh, you also mentioned about the flow chemistry getting commercialized. Can you elaborate a bit on what that would enable us in terms of uh, scaling up the existing molecules? I mean, flow chemistry, pardon? Flow chemistry, flow chemistry. You also mentioned about the flow chemistry uh, uh, getting commissioned, uh, commercialized this year. Um, as, uh, what kind of advantages that will throw us? Yes, the flow chemistry is a capability development. It is a capability development the organization doing, which will look at the asset structures in a different way. And we, are, and we will be commercial, we are looking to commercialize one of these areas, and that will give us the confidence to look at a different way to get a return on assets with time. So basically, this will uh, uh, help in two ways. Uh, one is that this will dramatically reduce the plant's uh, footprint, which means that the capital efficiency, which is the key objective, you know, long-term objective of us in this business, that will be gradually achieved. And then apart from capital efficiency, I mean, even the cost of production improvement, cycle improvement, all safety. those benefits, <laughs> safety, I mean, these benefits also will be achieved. Basically, it leads to enhancement of capacity in the existing facilities. Capacity, cost efficiency, and also safety. All three four of them. Okay. See, um, uh, can you uh, put on the capex for the current year and also what kind of uh, capex budgeted for the next year? If you can guide us on that. Well, we're not frozen the capex for next year, but money for this year, can you please? Yeah. 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 of 228 crores up till now, and we expect, as we spoke in the last uh, quarter uh, call, around 300 to 350 crores would be the far uh, uh, capex for the year. Okay, thank you so much. And next year, capex plans are still in uh, uh, discussions in the making because uh, there are several sectors, including the pipeline, including some of the in our winning opportunities that we are evaluating. So, you know, I mean, the finalization of next year's capex will only happen by end of this quarter or something. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Aditya Javar from Investec Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, congrats for reporting strong growth in CSM. 
Uh, yeah. The question on CAPEX, you know, got partly answered. But, you know, one thing just wanted to understand that uh, organically for us, if you have to think about CAPEX for 23, 24, in the order of magnitude, could it be 20, 30% higher or much higher than that? Any broad sense on CAPEX for 23, 24? Uh, yes, if you want to look at that, but at the same time, I want to highlight that we also work on technologies to improve in asset utilization, as you've already seen this year. We have other plans to do that. Followed is we are putting some of the flow areas that will work. So that is why I think what Rajesh mentioned earlier, we're still looking at the technologies and balancing between risk and rewards and putting up a CAPEX plan. But clearly we see a positive trajectory in looking at the CAPEX depending because we are seeing a correct trajectory in demand. Uh, and as you would appreciate, that over the last two years, we had aggressively put in capex because you know typical of need for building capacity before demand. So I think that's what's supporting us through this process. Yeah. Yeah, um, uh, that's encouraging to hear. Uh, so you know, broadly, if we can get a sense that what is the line of sight of improvement in asset terms that we can expect in the next you know two years by the you know so many uh, projects that we are doing, how much upside we can see from the asset terms from current the next two years? This is again a chicken and egg story to be very honest right now because one side if we are getting inquiries for sometimes you know in this business you can't build an asset just for the revenue. We'll have to build capacity based for a three to four year visibility, right? Yeah. So the investments sometimes go up front when you get those peaks and troughs, but obviously the objective is to improve its efficiency. But in the next two years, looking at what we see in terms of surge in demand in terms of capacities we may build. I would see marginal improvement here, not something substantial to be very taken down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, have seen, uh, we have seen some improvement in this uh, year, in this quarter also, as you have seen, and we are we are confident that uh, while yes, on both sides, on one side, uh, commercialization of new projects happening, um, building of new capacity will also happen, and on the other side, we are also kind of uh, you know implementing some of these technologies to improve the you know efficiency, plant efficiency throughput. So combined impact will come. Difficult to you know quantify that as of now, but the direction is very clear that capital efficiency is gradually going to improve. Yeah. Okay. Um, the final question. You know, if we have to break the current capex, that is about uh, for FI22, uh, that is about 350 crore uh, into you know the maintenance capex, the capex for backward integration and growth capex. You know, roughly what could be the breakup? Money, you would have that. Uh, um, I will try and um, I have to come back. Or uh, normally we don't give such breakup on the capex front. Fair enough. Just one, one, uh, just one part. That just if you can give, what could be the capex for the backward integration? That would be sufficient. Yeah, that is not significant because some part has already come um, earlier. Some part has come within this uh, quarter. So I think not more than uh, 60, 70 crore or something. 70 crores for FI22. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Thanks a lot, sir. All the best. Thank you. Before we take our next question, we would like to request participants to please limit their questions to two per party. Our next question is from the line of Abhijit Akela from IIFL Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, thank you so much for taking my questions. Uh, just a couple of clarifications. One is uh, if it's possible to share the ISAGRO export revenues for this quarter and for the nine months. That would be helpful. Thanks. Yeah. Money, you would have that, or you will share what separately? Federal. No. Some of its core revenues we will share separately. Please. Sure. I'll remember. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the other thing was uh, just to uh, you know uh, confirm that uh, we've talked about this 20% kind of uh, CSM growth target for the next few years. Uh, with good visibility. So uh, we are still on track for that. And uh, on the domestic side, what kind of uh, growth would we expect for next year? And also, if you could just comment on the margins, uh, is it possible that we could see a recovery next year of the low base of this year? Okay. Yes, I mean, as we projected, the growth rates are looking to be in the same direction. And obviously, as we'll also catch up the growth rate as we expect it to do, far better than what we've had based on the launching of products and new products coming to registration, we see a good year going forward. 
thank you uh, one last thing uh, uh, in swift uh, you know sometime back in december uh, put out an announcement saying that uh, apparently pi has approached the uh, arbitrate the commercial court at gurugram uh, you know for some kind of arbitration and conciliation so uh, if you could just uh, you know confirm whether that is the case and what is the the update on that and what do we sort of uh, you know plan for for that uh, discussion going forward yeah and then uh, with this since the matter is subjected i think it will not be correct on my part to kind of uh, put any commentary around this but yes some proceedings are happening on that um so the uh, idea is uh, you know that we've uh, we we're still sort of trying to see if you know a deal can happen there is, is that the uh, thought process behind that or no this is what i said we uh, think that since the matter is still based and there are certain um, proceedings uh, legal initiatives taken by us so i think it is not correct on our part to kind of uh, put a lot of details and comments here on all understood sir yeah thank you so much uh, uh, thank you so much i'll come back thank you and next question is from the line of bharat shah from ask investment managers please go ahead yeah uh, uh two uh, two questions uh, one on uh, talent management retention nurturing and growth uh what are the thoughts uh, strategies and ideas uh we have seen over a period of time uh kind of a recurrent uh separation of uh, talent uh, time to time yes so you know as you seen by that we have just now put a whole strategy of develop and deliver agenda for putting a new purpose and vision and strategy to put the whole talent map together clearly the organization looking at the objectives that needs to appear, uh, achieve it looks at talent and talent management approaches in line to that as we were seeing certain talent as it was acquired in order to help and augment the organization to grow and move to the next level while we internally we have been able to develop the new talent which has come in shape with the leadership of the two leaders today uh who have more experience to drive the future strategy and growth and as a constant as a constant drive we have taken many initiatives in this area and we are continuing to grow in house talent in line with the competence and capability required for the future growth as which has been defined and described by us new operating business model uh mind your voice is not very clear if you can speak closer to the mouthpiece or uh, without the speaker phone i think it will help uh uh so are we kind of happy about uh our initiatives uh or is it a source of concern uh, given a uh, fair number of departures that we have seen well i'm not sure that what level of departures that we're talking because some have been retired some have moved on because of a certain uh, data and we have enough talent in house which is taken up chart and shape which was developed which is there so if i to look at the data points pi attrition rates are far lower than the industry average which is being paid in today's growth opportunity that the industry is operating right uh, but at the same time we are looking to always this today's world is a little different world of the youngsters so the point is that we are working in a strategy where we have well mitigated risk from talent by developing talent internally and most of these positions and growth rates have been taken internally and we continue to invest in building talent and acquiring certain talent back in alignment to the strategies of business areas that you want to focus for you yeah okay my second question is going back into the past and uh, projection for the future so four years back when we were discussing uh, we were saying that in five years time we should be a billion dollar business and uh, capital efficiency uh, to be in the 30s uh, is reckon on capital employee uh, uh, a billion dollar four years back uh, meant about 6800 crore or there about so are we on the way next year to be around that ambition and on capital efficiency and the objective of uh, in the 30s rather than 20s 
And uh, corollary to that, if we have to thereafter think of our business, uh, whether in three years, four years, or five years' time, we believe given initiatives, given client engagements, new chemistries, in our product offering basket, uh, are we likely to see the business uh, doubling? Whether three years thereafter, four years, five years, then. So that was that was that question. You know, we're not an organization that likes to be in sleep. We are, we want to grow at an aggressive pace, and clearly, yes, we want to deliver that. I'm pretty confident that given the energy, the drive of the team internally, and a passion to grow in the areas of our competences, the areas of technology, and more importantly, anchored with the ESG framework and sustainability. Uh, we don't see these kind of challenges, obviously, but both organic and organic to achieve the objective that we set, we have set out for ourselves, and we'll continue to do that. Obviously, if you look at what you did question of the today, if we didn't have one of the M&A activities, we would be well there in that number. But, well, we're looking for other opportunities. So what stops us from not getting to that number, which we set ourselves out to achieve, and what we are looking to do in the next four to five years, we would like to be more aggressive in order to get to this place faster. And that's what we're building the organization resources. So we've already deployed a large number of resources in the areas for growth opportunity and identification. Uh, the reason why I'm asking that question is opportunity probably has never been better uh, for India in general and more specifically for PI given uh, uh, the kind of favorable position PI has put itself into with research driven uh, chemistry and foreign into allied branches, as well as uh, client relationships and global affinity for uh, India based uh, quality specialist players like uh, PI compared to the uh, other competition in other parts of the world. Therefore, I mean, time to get more ambitious probably has never been uh, tomorrow. Probably it is yesterday, I, I would have thought. Yes. You know, ambitions are never going to die, number one. Number two, as you rightly said, technology in ABC. So technology is not probably sometimes chasing the long tail uh, with steps of differentiator. And when they get to that tail, it has to give you a spike. So the CPI is working in the discovery area. And this is a long tail. And so therefore, we're not giving up that and nothing like the opportunity that India today has to offer. We're looking at the technology capability, which is going to be more globalized, rather than localized and opportunistic in nature. So we are still, we've not left our path, as you know, we've set our path and we're moving up the value curve. And as we mentioned, we're focused on the discovery area and we're talking to global partners on the development front which puts the idea completely a different technical competence capability compared to any of its uh, competitors in that scene. On the other hand, our chemistry capabilities, which have been leveraged across the other application areas, would also augment our strengths and also widen our offerings to a different bucket, basket of customers and yet create a larger differentiator anchor with some of these areas. So we are pretty clear and confident in this would give us the next kick up of growth. It takes the base foundation to become strong and when you're developing technologies, but the kick ups happen pretty well. And we're pretty confident that you're well on the way to do that. Hmm? Sure. So the basic initiative is while positive, but our idea is to make an India for the world with a differentiator to say that there is the best of technology, the best of cost. So we're focusing on those language. Not just the zero of cost today or the opportunity of the landscape being offered now. Sure, thank you. I continue to be admirer uh, and well wisher of PI journey so far. I hope that is the way it stays. Thank you. Thank you for your wishes. Thank you. We'd like to request participants to please limit your questions to two per participant. Time permitting, you may come back in the queue for our follow up questions. Our next question is from the line of Tejas Sheikh from Nippon, India. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, good afternoon. Um, on the, as uh, we continue to pursue the pharma TSM space to inorganic route, uh, what is the aspiration for us to have um, the revenue from the same over the next three years uh, organically?
ഹലോ 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 question question uh, the question was on the um, so obviously we are pursuing the inorganic route uh, on the segment um, what would be our aspiration to um, from that segment uh, or next 3 years uh, on the revenue side organically organic well right now with a bit of construction but obviously with the three billets which we are ready ready looking to see but otherwise not only substantial enough for pia to chase <laughs> uh so no just a clarification on that so even if we don't acquire any asset uh, are we looking at 1000 crore of revenue potential over next 3 years uh, that would be 1000 you know, crore and pharma my friend is a pretty large revenue which will not be possible organically to be very straight in 3 years yes no no chance so obviously 100 crore because we are looking at the area of uh, um, you know intermediate non gmp so the organic route is where we're going to leverage to grow back up in 3 years you can't get that number in, in organic way in organic way sorry okay okay and um, um on the agro csm side um i mean if you see four years uh, ago i mean there were only three four players uh, which were very key to the uh, innovators uh, but as we see today um there are many 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 players and 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 most of the business now is done through rfqs rather than on relationship basis um are you seeing a uh, intense competition on csm agro side well i'm not sure about what you mean by rfq in this because um or well depend on where you are number one yes there are many more players the landscape will import expand as business and expand and as the first movers but again which part of the pie because there are also sourcing with blue from china to india which could be also in the generic space which could be the product which companies already making or intermediate is companies are making and are getting business opportunities which they were competitive for cost in the past so clearly for new generation new product development i am not seeing the rfq approach really happening it is still based on competencies capabilities and partnership of trust which are taking that day and they definitely have a role to play and specifically where they see that they are looking for continuous improvement to deliver efficiency and cost so obviously competition is going to come and will come but the point is what are we doing and what we continue to do to create uh, uh, be ahead of the competition and that's where we have our capabilities in the area of technological build up so what we see in the new generation products to value up to our customer so that's where where it is right now yeah got it got it yeah. thank you very much for answering thank you we take a next question from the line of kushi doshi from axa noun investment management please go ahead thank you for the opportunity so as i when one annual report mentioned that uh, 46 new molecules were synthesized during the year out of which 20 were scaled up and six were transferred successfully to the next stage and uh, uh, five molecules were commercialized during the year so my question here is uh, what is the percent of molecules that are commercialized for the company from the total molecules synthesized it would be better if you could provide uh, last year as well as uh, five years average number thank you well to be honest we don't have them with us right now but it could be funny so the funnel of commercialization with the summer three year gestation two year gestation five year gestation period or then you have short gestation periods but nothing that commercialized from an inquiry to commercialization less than 2 years by the typical time frame for producing samples approvals pilotization further approvals regulatory work is that is applicable and then putting up facilities or optimizing facilities for production okay could the number be provided in time later yeah we can get some of the data okay thank you also uh, could you shed some light on what type of electronic chemicals is the company working on well the grant book detail on to that as you know we are about under very strict confidentiality clauses with the partner yes you're working that segment and again then you know the area okay thank you <coughs> thank you our next question is from the line of sumanth kumar from motilal uswal please go ahead Uh, can you talk about the okira uh, performance in this quarter and what kind of uh, target we have for this product uh, for next 2 to 3 years 
Well, well, the performance, I would say, as we've highlighted, the performance of the product has been very highly satisfactory, actually. We're very really well over with the kind of performance. More importantly, this has been done because of the excellent execution and hard work of our team to have done a phenomenal field work activity for concept selling, which has shown us a free edge jump over last year. And clearly, the way I see it, going into the future, it's competition sensitive, so we definitely are very Gungo, as I would start out saying, aggressive growth plans on this product. Not only that, but we have a bunch of food new other molecules that are coming in, which we would see a huge shift in the way we see demand in the domestic sector. So do we have a task, any target of some particular numbers uh, we are going to reach in maybe a couple of years? I would not like to highlight that for, as I said, for competitive consensus purposes and also Okay. But yet, as I said, we have pretty good address to growth numbers and we are confident that that can be done. Yeah? Okay. And, the, and the product you have launched, a TV not, uh, can you talk about uh, is uh, the potential target uh, overall, um, what kind of uh, growth uh, potential and uh, uh, in this product? Prashant, maybe you can give some input on the TV not and how you see this as a social program. Maybe Prashant, are you there? Hi, uh, good afternoon. So uh, PV Knot is a novel uh, technology which we are basically widely testing at this point of time. And uh, this year also it has gone through a lot of testing and uh, trials, commercial trials. We are hopeful to commercialize this in the coming year in the in cotton uh, area. Uh, this product is a pheromone based technology and uh, it is basically tied to the plant and it has to be a community approach which farmers have to adopt. So that is why we are also working with various communities, various appeals, and the government organizations in Maharashtra and Punjab as well. So because it's a novel insecticide, it is a new approach which we have to follow and the community approach. So uh, it is going to take a little more time than the regular uh, insecticides. But it is a good product and we are hopeful. Uh, at this point of time, there are no other products which can give this kind of control on PV not which this product can give. So because of the, the community approach which we need to follow, so it is going to take a little more time to scale up. But it is going to be a sustainable product and it is a long-term product. That is how I can put it. And just one more thing I would add, the thing about warm is a pretty menace in the cotton past and if there is no other solution. But this is again a unique concept selling where we need a huge amount of public partnership and participation to make sure that the farmer is able to see the benefit. And I must say there's a huge interest which has been shown by various state governments and that government to say that how Korea can partner to put this concept into the market. And I think the positive outcomes have been very encouraging to the extent that we have been able to socially make an impact of this product and make sure that the farmer is able to get uh, a better crop and yield and not get damaged by this pest called the bomb bomb. Hmm? Is it like a licensing product? Hmm? Sorry, what did you ask? Is it a licensing product? No, it is our own registered product. Uh, yes, obviously we partner with a, a, a Japanese company. Uh, but we have an exclusive license uh, for India. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Surya Patra from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for taking my question. So, so just on the, uh, given the commentary on the flow chemistry side, what you have mentioned, there is cost efficiency, uh, OPEX efficiency as well as CAPEX efficiency, Driven by that, so is it fair to believe that going ahead, uh, whatever capex that we would be planning, that would be largely based on that. Uh, if that is yes, then what uh, technological challenges that you could face in developing or in in developing the processes for the flow chemistry technology? Ladies Hello. and gentlemen, we request you to please remain connected. It looks like Mr. Singhal's line has dropped out. We'll just uh, reconnect him back. Please hold the line. The call will start shortly.
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your patience. We have the line for management connected. Uh, Mr. Patra, we request you to please repeat your question. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so just I was asking about the flow chemistry about which that you have commented that uh, this is going to have both uh, opex efficiency as well as capex efficiency. So going ahead, uh, is it fair to believe the larger chunk of our capex will be driven by that? And uh, if yes, what challenges that one would see in developing the processes to fit to the flow chemistry? Not very much. Uh, I'm not getting your voice very clearly. Sorry, we talk about flow chemistry, then I did the other part was muffled before. Uh, I, is, that, is this line is correct now, sir? Maybe you can put a bit further away where the voice is cracking. So if okay. you talk further away from your phone, maybe maybe clear. Okay, so, so I was asking that, sir, since we have talked that, uh, and that is known that this flow chemistry, if it is implemented right, then it can offer both capex as well as opex efficiency meaningfully than the batch process. So, so if that is the case, then going ahead, uh, large part of our capex would be driven by that. Well, let me put it this way: is it number one? It's a flow chemistry, the concept which has been around for a while, which is now getting to some people looking commercially. It is not that it can replace batch processes. It is not something that in all chemistry, in all kind of areas, it can replace. And yes, in certain critical areas, it can replace where it can give both operational excellence and also can give you safety and a capital cost structure. So the PI is building this capability and looking at certain of the areas of opportunity that we have where we can actually bring this value offer to the table for the company, right? And once you build this capability, maybe we can drive more projects and strategy aligned to that, yeah? Uh, my second question is on the on the kind of a new areas that we have been talking about, sir. Whether it is the fine chemical one or the pharma one, or like that, or the electronic chemicals, what we have already initiated something. So, uh, see, let's say on the three-year time year uh, time period horizon, what is the kind of a revenue mix that we should be seeing out of uh, non-agro base? And uh, also, if you can add to that. In terms of uh, customer composition in the CHN side uh, for the non non agro base, what is the composition it would look like three years down the line? In the organic way, in for five, three to five years, we could see about 15, 20 percent of this. We were looking to continue to grow on that big base there, and also at the same time, it's yeah. based cash. Yeah. Okay. Same is the case even the customer composition. Yes. Okay, so just if I can just add in here, like uh, uh, what is the current base of our uh, agro uh, CSM uh, customer base, and what is what is the uh, the potential target customer base? Means whether we have enough scope to add more customer to our uh, uh, customer base or something on that front also, if you can add. Well, there's always a scope, but I think you're covering most of the customer bases in that, where we are focusing on the products in the custom manufacturing point and looking at the pipeline working along with that, yeah? Sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, before we take our next question, we request participants to please limit your questions to one per party. Our next question is from the line of uh, Rohan Gupta from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Sir, uh, slightly in line with the previous question only, sir, we have been leading player in a agrochemical CSM and among the probably first player to enter into that business and have uh, done extremely well. But somehow, sir, uh, probably we have not been able to scale up our capabilities in other segment in non-agro, whether it's a pharma or uh, probably in a newer segment. Sir, do you think that there are limitations that from agrochemical players, it's challenging to get into other businesses while uh, while other chemical players probably who are non-focused, non-agrochemical focus are probably able to scale up their capabilities in other segments. Is it a limiting factor, sir? Well, I'm not, I don't think so bad at all. I think we focused on something and achieved height and that very clearly, as you said, we're now focusing on the other segments and going at it. 
And the pharma is very clearly defined strategy. Okay, in the short term, you had this challenge of this M&A opportunity, but I don't see there's a challenge. Uh, it is more about getting it done. And that's where we are. And we see the opportunity in the other areas, which is already entered. Obviously, we would have seen that the CSM business that we have been able to achieve has not happened over now. It's taken 25 years, 20 to 25 years to get to where we are today. Right? So it takes time. And if you want to focus strategically in the right space, and some of these we've initiated long ago. I mean, if you today talk the non-electronic chemicals, we're talking about for now three to five.